Hello, hello to all. Sorry about the uh, rather long hiatus from the YouTubes. Things have just been busy IRL. Uh, but with enough of that, with that said, I'm here today in the Tier 8 Japanese Premium Carrier, Kaga. Uh, not too many carrier changes going on on this current patch. We're on patch 0.9.6, so the release of the Petro Pavlovsk and the early release of the German carriers. The Kaga, however, is neither the Petro Pavlovsk or a German carrier. It is, in fact, the Japanese Tier 8 Premium and a veteran of the game. Lost a bit of her seal clubbing prowess from when she was an RTS carrier tier 7, but she's still certainly quite the monster. No enterprise, mind you. But she gets the job done. Anyhow, here today testing a slightly different build. Now most of my carrier builds, my primary Hakaryu captain included, use the torpedo acceleration skill, which adds 5 knots of speed to your torpedoes in exchange for increasing the arming distance and shortening the overall range. Uh, this cargo captain, however, is not taking torpedo acceleration, instead putting the two points into, well, depending on your build, either plane speed or the two one-pointers for last gasp and uh, improved engine boost time. This is, of course, because of the Kaga's torpedo setup, which, uh, besides having a very deep reserve of torpedoes, the Kaga has a unique for Japanese, uh, 3x4 setup, so 3 sets of 4, using a few extra rockets here against the Shokaku fighter. I have to try and abort these, which I am unsuccessful in doing, but it's quite fine. Rockets are mainly there for scouting. Obviously there though I expended more fighters than are necessary, but a rocket pass for 3,500 is pretty reasonable for Kaga rockets, and I still have 16 more, 17 more now actually, so nothing too unreasonable. Anyway, back to the 3x4 torpedo setup that I was mentioning. Because the Kaga launches those 3x4 quad torp setups, uh, it needs a torpedo acceleration nonetheless. The torpedoes aren't particularly useful against cruisers, unlike those of the Shokaku at the same tier in the Japanese tech tree line. So as a result, the Kaga tends to favor uh, attacking slower, more sluggish targets because of the relatively not that tight nature, getting some defended ribbons using the last known location. Eight planes to dive onto an FDG. You can see the fragile D for Y, the combined A of the Prince Eugen, Venezia, and FDG. Not surviving particularly long. Just hoping to get one full drop off. Don't quite get the turn off, but three bombs impact for 8,000 on an unsaturated Frederic de Groza. Now, do you have the last known location? So, as you can see, without torpedo acceleration, my torpedoes have dropped in speed from 55 to 50 knots, but the torpedo range has gone up from 5, or from 4 kilometers back up to the original distance of 5 kilometers. In addition, the torpedo arming distance has decreased somewhat. Now, I was going to send torpedoes toward that Fletcher in the smoke to check the last known location and clear him out, but it looks like uh, he got splattered by the Oscar Gotland's torpedoes. However, you can see the cap is still ticking, which suggests to me that there's a destroyer probably right in front of this Venezia. It's actually not in front of this Venezia, it's actually a UFO. Now, as I was mentioning, our torpedoes are slower now, and because of the quad net, they're not particularly apt for uh, hitting destroyers. Unlike, say, the Shokaku, they are perfectly competent, however, for spotting the Yukimo. And if I can guide him into a net like that, it's quite possible I can hit him. Now it's going to require a heal in this case because I decided to take a flag buff. But I'm going to keep him lit. He might allies one more chance to go for a reset. And even at 50 knots, they are quite fast and quite make quite a wide net. So as you can see here, I usually would F out here, but this torpedo. Looks like it's on course to hit him, which it does. So even at 50 knots, the torpedoes are still substantially faster than the torpedoes of other nations, which only reach 40 knots thanks to their 35 knot base speed, that is American and German and British torpedoes in this case. So because the base speed of Japanese torpedoes is so high at 50, uh, you get some pretty good mileage out of it. 
popping the engine cooling on my A6M zeros to try and get the reset, but unable to do so, sadly. Enemy does pop a fighter for the Yugmo, but you can see that low HP prints Eugen. My rockets have 28mm of penetration, the Eugen has 27mm of plating, and he's quite low. He pops his fighter and his heal, so he's gonna survive. He was at 4k health, so I was hoping to try and kill him off, but... One strike into the fire. Looking for the window of opportunity with the lowest AA, but my allied spotting plus my rocket strike does finish him off. Or it does allow the Stalingrad to finish him off, rather. Now there's a Doug in Donskoy, he's about to get flanked by my Udaloy and my North Carolina. I haven't moved my carrier hull at all, by the way. So I should probably pressure a little. I'm gonna move down here because I feel like we're gonna be pretty successful here. It's really just a Donskoy holding it down. Launching the D4Ys. Now the AGDBs that you saw me make that first FDG strike on. Do you have a hefty 8,800 alpha, 55 millimeters of penetration, and these are HE bombs, unlike those of the tech tree Shokaku, with the recently nerfed ABDBs. So no nerfs to Kaga here, so in terms of relative power level, the Shokaku and Kaga got a little bit closer. The Shokaku uh, for formerly edging her out in most aspects, especially in terms of having a more flexible kit. But now the Kaga's like kind of closer. Kaga still leans more towards abusing heavier targets. In general, the Jean Bar AA shredding holes through my squadron. Probably shouldn't have brought that many planes in the first place, but that's just fine. Set a fire onto the FDG. And I'm going to pressure that battleship cluster. Now there's that Jean Bar as I mentioned, but I have my heal, which is more like a shield coming up. And I have full reserves of torpedo bombers, so I'm not afraid to toss some into the abyss. Fire's still ticking, but nevertheless, I'm going to help my North Carolina Trippets and Udaloi pressure the FTG. The FTG is actually favored against those tier 8s, especially with that Jean Bar backing him up. Still retaining the 6.07 stealth parameters of the full concealment build Kaga. That's concealment module plus concealment expert on the captain. Running it down, he's moving quite slowly. Pop that shield, as I mentioned. I don't imagine I'm gonna need too much more damage. He's gonna take all four of those torpedoes. And so as a result, I can aim my turn and go in on this not very fast moving bow in Jean Bar. Now he's gonna move forward, I imagine. Or he doesn't move his engine at all, and I get a perfect quad torpedo strike twice in a row. You can see, even with the slight reduction in speed of 5 knots, my torpedoes remain extremely potent, and thanks to my extremely large reserves, I'm able to dig in. Now this captain is also usable on the Hakaru, and while well, any tech tree carrier, it's just a matter of preference as to what you want. Now if you run torpedo acceleration, you get increased, uh, in my opinion, better anti-destroyer capabilities on your torpedoes, the arming distance does increase, which gives them more reaction time, but at the same time faster torpedoes are harder to dodge. But in particular, torpedo acceleration is uh, very useful against uh, fast cruisers, so targets such as the Henry IV or the Venezia, if you remember, if you played Carrier in the recent clan battles season, are quite slippery. And so having 55 knot torpedoes rather than 50 knot torpedoes, both of which are faster than them, uh, do help a lot in clearing them out. I'm trying to maneuver to get a good position onto the Bismarck right now. Not offering me much of an angle, but this Venezia is kind of okay. He's turning in toward me. Venezia flak. It's pretty heavy. And it's short range. Is absolutely formidable. Don't expect to hit him, by the way. Looking backward, but I do manage to clip him on the bow with one torpedo. I'm gonna have to fly these guys through some flak and through some Bismarck AA. Managed to get three torpedoes off. And even with the relatively reduced speed, looks like we can get two center line hits. One, two, and maybe even the third. Not quite enough to kill because the torpedo does strike on the bulge, but really no trouble 
impacting the game as necessary. And with that kill, I am going to end the match. Wow, this music is kind of loud. Well, I'm just gonna have to live with it, I think. The only other thing I can do is manually adjust on the volume slider how loud it is. But anyway, sorry about that. You're looking at the score screen for a bit. Only 88,000 damage because we did end the game fairly quickly before everyone died. Uh, but 13 torpedo strikes, 7 target hits, with bombs, 3 in caps, 2 kills, 3 fires, 4 floods, 3 defender ribbons, 13 spawning ribbons, and 9 target hits. I briefly flickered the team score. You can see I was second from the top in the Kaga at 1700, so nothing too special there. Only just recently earned my top tier carrier emblem, much to my chagrin, thanks to uh, some clowning on my part. Haven't always been as proficient as I am now, so as a result it did take a little while to get that average damage up there. Detailed report wise, you can see most of the damage caused by the torpedoes, in spite of me having somewhat reduced their efficiency against certain targets. But as I was saying, or as I, as I was saying, the quad torpedo setup of the Kaga makes it so that torpedo acceleration is ne less necessary. So instead of the typical core 9 skills, which I recommend, I've gone for the alternate core, which is a indomitable core, which doesn't take torpedo acceleration at all. So going air supremacy into plane speed, into survivability expert, and then improved armor, and that's your base 9. Uh, carrier build in this case. And then for Kaga or the IGN core, the next step is site stabilization. Now this is more for the Hakuryu than for the Kaga herself. As an Ichi dive bomber using carrier, she can actually get away without using site stabilization. So if you're running a Kaga specific captain, you, you can actually take these four points off and put it into Demolition Expert plus uh, Direction Center for fighters. But since this is a hack captain as well, the next priority is Site Stabilization, followed by Concealment Expert, and then you go back into your one-pointers. The Kaga herself is already very stealthy as well. You look at her Concealment, I'm at 9.9, .9, but even without it, I sit at about 11, which is uh, fairly impressive, to say the least. Anyhow, pretty short game there, so... 1.7 million experience, not easy to see on the current interface, but that is what it is. This is my current module setup. Running air groups modification, aircraft engines, and it's still running torpedo bombers modification 1. There's actually an argument, just argument for switching to aerial torpedoes, considering I did drop the speed somewhat. Five percent speed would give me two and a half knots to com come up to 52.5 knots of speed. So considering I'm running this build on Nakaga now, I think I'm going to switch over. Now, in the past, I run TBM1 because 1, this modification didn't exist, and 2, uh, having the extra 5 seconds does allow you to make attacks from longer range if necessary. But in the current metagame and the kind of speed creep of the game, I think speed might be a little more important than being able to line up that perfect first drop from any range. So we're going to switch her over. I did test the module on Kaga initially when it came out, and I didn't really like it that much, but we're going to try her again. With this updated build, which kind of moves our speed back towards our original 55 knots, it's going to be 52.5, which should hopefully round to 53 in client. Now, if I'm not mistaken, increasing speed no matter what always increases arming distance, so I'm assuming we're going to see that 806 meter arm distance increase. But the extra speed is definitely worth it. We, you did see me get that one hit onto the Yugamo with the quad net by kind of doing a pseudo cross drop, first dropping from behind to force him to move in a straight line, and then secondly hitting him from the side. So there definitely are some use cases against an enemy Kaga, again in tier 10 matchmaking. Nothing too special, there's a Holland here in this match though, which is annoying, as well as some uh, weeb ships. Or rather, a collaboration ship, this one being a Warhammer 40k ship. Uh, 
Again, gonna start with, scout with the A6M5s. Now there's the Holland, so if I bump into the Holland, he's gonna absolutely disintegrate the squadron. I can just move, start by moving a little bit forward, but that's pretty typical, and you can't really stop that from happening. The A6M50 is a very fragile plane anyway, you can see that 8 plane squadron only has about 1200 hit points. But having a Holland in the game is not an excuse to do your job as a carrier and a scout. Uh, also, the Holland is not invulnerable, it still takes damage, so even if it costs you planes, you can eventually kill him if it is necessary to do so. Hear the updated audio engine in the background. Some AA ticking. It's a Yugumo. Gotta be careful not to turn into that flat buff. Looking for another 3.5k, just like on that Fletcher last game. Only two rockets, thanks to the rather inferior dispersion spread of the A6M20, or A6M50 rather. But, in this case, we're able to get a second strike in spite of the Georgia's proximity. Down to the last four, down to the last plane, but we do score a fire. Not as much damage as I had hoped for. But we do turn him away from the central cap. Enemy Kaga dropping my Champagne, which doesn't have great AA. Who also appears to be AFK. So that one's going to be a fun one for him. Looks like C is blocked at this point, so I'm going to do a flyby. I did see hear some AA tick, but I'm still at full health, so I'm not sure what that is about. Massachusetts. I'm gonna avoid his AA aura for as long as possible. So an AA flicker, it is in fact the Holland. It's going to shred my squadron because I'm gonna touch a flak buff which spawns on my face. And that is what happens. However, just because he kills one squadron, well, not a big deal because I am a Kaga. But even when you're experienced, a destroyer like the Kaga can get you off guard and obliterate your squadron. Now if you're not named Kaga, it might not immediately destroy your squadron like it did there. But I did also catch the continuous AA ores of the Massachusetts because I was kind of forcing my way into the cap. Enemy Kaga over my Zed, I'm assuming he's going to smoke. If he doesn't smoke, he's exceptionally foolish. We'll see if he loses any cap progress. I'm headed for the Thunderer in the current game state. Oh, I'm actually going to divert for the B cap because I know it's not the Holland. I have the stealthy. 6 kilometer radius, that tells me exactly where the enemy destroyer is, I know which edge he's on. So just like the Yugmo from last match, I'm gonna force him out, I'm gonna drop a fighter and try and aggro it, but I'm gonna glide toward this enemy Georgia, and this is the goal, I'm gonna lose planes on the way in anyway. We're only looking to abscond with the last 4 planes. Now remember I'm missing two knots of speed at the moment compared to my previous build. One, two, three. Oh, no, just two. But we do force that guy from the cap. I do want to pressure that Howland, so I'm going to go for the D4Ys again. The Massachusetts is rather close. Now the fighters finally are meeting each other. I drop the fighter to basically eliminate his fighter. But wait, more importantly, we force the Yugmo from the smoke, which means we can follow up with the HEDVs. Not particularly successful in this game so far, just 9,000 damage, but we did secure a cap lead. Massachusetts is practically beside the Holland now, which makes him extremely unattractive for the tier 7 planes of my carrier. He drops the Yugmo another fighter, but I still have plenty of fighters of my own, which means I can do the same trick if I really want to. 
stay on the edge because if I go too close, the fighter's gonna be destroyed by Georgia AA before I can do anything. I see the Georgia AA trimming a little bit, but the Kaga fighter does arm and I think chase that fighter, I'm not sure. Nope, I can't really charge the Holland still. Oh, the fighter's still there. Rather tragically, so I've circled around and blew a fighter for nothing. Uh oh, my hull seems to be going in a very uh, ineffectual position, so I'm gonna get shot at a little bit. Going after the Thunderer because his position is relatively isolated. Just looking for a fire. Pop some frame stutter. He pops his defensive fire for some reason. The fearsome Kaga dive bombers. No point circling for another pass. Just gonna duck back out. A nice almost 10,000 pass and a fire. Yukimo again trying to take the cap and again I'm going to repel him from it. My teammates at the A cap that we took are dying because well they made some positional errors. FDG goes down. At this point, it's actually more important for me to finish off the Thunderer than to repulse him from the cap, where you have a relatively even cap point. Although if he's gonna do this, it's kind of tempting to hit him. I'm just gonna abort the strike, and this time I only have to wait 10 seconds because we took off the TBM1, so I don't have to wait 15. So that's one advantage there, if I want to abort a strike. Using the mountain to block AA, and I have my shields up. Let's see if we can toast this Thunderer. It's turning outward already. Drops pretty well led though. And he takes four. My hull takes some damage in the far distance. Takes that flooding, which means this strike will be very easy. He's slowed down, he's turning in to try and short some of them, but the central set will always arm. And he takes another flooding. Holland there on the edge, still being annoying. Now Holland I don't anticipate making, or sur I don't anticipate surviving more than one drop, so I'm going to pre-drop. You can see them taking A, also the Thunderer JCP, sadly for me. In the past I would have slingshot this, but it's no longer viable. You can see that 5 second wait time. Let's see if he pops the defensive fire. Yes he does, but you can see if the flat doesn't spawn on you, you don't actually die immediately. So imagine I were, imagine these were a full squadron of midway bombers and all. He's not going to kill them all. He does force me to drop early by accelerating, but I force him from his position and I can just come back. He's now popped his defensive fire. We are currently losing this match. You can see my team quite quickly dying. My A side team not quite knowing how to play in terms of the destroyers not doing their job in screening. Full squadron of Kaga dive bombers, kind of running out of them. This is what happens when a Holland destroys 12, no defensive fire this time. Moving slower than I anticipated. Sadly, my teammates aren't particularly interested in shooting at him. Someone does help me light a fire. And finally, I get a three plane strike. Looks like he's kind of AFK or something. He was present enough to uh, blast my planes out of the water, or out of the sky earlier, but seems to have become more reluctant as time goes on. Looks like that's a reload booster Kagero over there based on the double spread. GK does finally catch him out. I'm thinking about where I need to go with my hull. 
in the future. Reluctantly using the rockets. Since that Kagero looks to be dead, I'm going to divert to the Yugmo. And indeed, he does get finished off by secondaries. This is a smoke Yugmo. Going to drop a fighter. Make sure he stays lit as he's sliding. He can either slow down to get into the smoke, which will allow my allies to get more accurate hits and allow me one accurate final hit, or... Oh, he's in the effects of Radar or Hydro. Looks like GK Hydro. But anyway, I wanted him to slow down or just keep accelerating and uh, try and leave. Yugmo does launch torpedoes. There's a half health Georgia there. Still have DBs in spite of abusing them and 30 torpedo bombers, which I should probably use instead. Be honest. Now, the enemy Kaga has dropped a fighter, but because I am a Kaga, I can't actually force my way through. You can see five planes in the squadron will reduce five, so I'll cut my squadron down to seven planes, and I'll be able to make one strike through the fighter. It's a unique trait of the Kaga. I'm gonna cut a little closer. We really do need a cap, but I can buy time by just killing off people, so... Taking my time here. I'm trying to zoom through the drop, but unable to make the turn because of the relatively unmaneuverable nature of the Kaga Bombers, so a bit of a mistake on my part. We really need some caps back. We have the story advantage now, but my Friesland should hopefully be able to take a cap zone. Georgia is turned down in a way. So let's abuse what's left of our reserves. And what's left of our reserves is a lot of lanes, actually. Again. Oh, that guy's dead. No need to force through a fighter if he's dead. And now there's a Bismarck left. Might have a good angle. Might actually go after the Venezia. Not a great target. The main issue is actually that he's kind of close to the island. Also, I'm going to pass through this fighter in order to get to there. You can see him attacking me. I'm going to force him outward. Not torpedo just manages to catch him. I'm just gonna force him to stay parallel with that drop. Not much else I can accomplish there. Now, if I'd gone after the Bismarck, I most certainly could have made some stri strikes, but I can be just as annoying to this tier 10 Venezia, which makes a steering error while dodging shells or something, and does take another torpedo in the rear. It takes two torpedoes in the rear, which is uh, interesting. His rudder is broken because he damage controlled the first torpedo strike, which did flood him. So now he's locked into a turn, from the looks of it. I have my engine cooling back once more. So since I know the Venezia is unable to correct his course as per normal, I can go after him. Now Venezia does have very fearsome close range AA, but more importantly for this case, he has very, very poor air, to air spotting range. Forcing out a smoke is perfect in my books. Enemy drops a fighter, so I'm just gonna loop out in a round. Entering the strike to get some damage resistance, 20%. And we're going to abort from there, but guess what? I'm a Kaga, so I still have 12 more torpedo bombers I can lean on if I would like to. My hull's almost to A. The fight is at C, unfortunately, but it is important that we take this cap zone. Thunder at 9,000 health. Does take a Kagero tower. Oh, there's a Zhao zooming in on my... Uh, what's it called? On my Friesland, so it's important that he got to see that. 
He pops a fighter, but it's fine. Keep him from charging directly, at the very least. Of course, he might just face tank these torpedoes. Wide combing spread means that bow on, they're not ideal. Zhao does do a good 36 knots at full speed, so important to give him a fair lead. Hoping to just hit him with two on the side. He managed to clip three. And more importantly, I wasn't to turn outward away from the Friesland, who should have had time to respond and ideally shoot him up, but at the very least not get torpedoed. But uh, he's gonna die to a fire, which is bad, obviously. Out of dive bombers here at this point. But I'm not out of ships, and I'm about to contest A. Do escape my hull into a safer position, and he's gonna try and use that freeze and smoke, but it's fading. Uh, the rocket's not great. But I still have everything left. Offensive fire Zhao, it seems. So that Friesen got pushed by a Zhao that doesn't even have Hydro. So not even gonna bother, just gonna relaunch. Could have gone with Torpedo Bombers, actually. But I'm just going for speed. Can't tell if he launched a fighter. I think I saw a glimpse of one. Yes, he did launch a fighter, so might as well let my... Rockets take the brunt of the fighter. The last of his defensive fire. More importantly, I'm spotting him out. Fighter will further reduce this squadron. But I'm just here to defend. Let the fighter tag. There's a low HP Bismarck and a low HP Zhao now to finish off. My Champagne finally gets killed off. But I'm not afraid of what's left of the enemy team. All I need is for my Massachusetts and Nevsky to continue pouring on firepower. Venezia, so I might need that last heal. The Zao's trying very desperately to stay in the camp. Not a lot of space for me to make a drop here. Did strike the Zhao with two torps, and then he died. This guy's already dead, which is why I'm not making the drop. Venezia is up there, I'll get some information onto the bin just because of this poor air spot, so I give my Venezia some early warning. Now, Venezia has very bad AA range, 4.8 kilometers, so I'm gonna zoom in and out. More importantly, I'm looking for an accurate drop and just shadowing him for the Nevsky. At this point I have the angle, because planes are faster than ships. And I'm gonna use this heal as a shield to force my way through with a four plane strike. Venezia is very fast, so I'll give him substantial lead. And one, two, three, maybe even the fourth. No kills this game, but I'm certainly uh, pulling my weight, I would say. Now all I have to do is go into sea. Nevsky should hopefully be able to brawl with the Vin. They both have good torpedo angles, but... The idea... Is that by crippling him with the Flood, hopefully the Nevsky has what it takes to kill him. Somehow they cross each other without torping each other. My Nevsky appears to have bungled his torp drop. Which means it might be up to me... Oh, to, uh... Kill him off. Nevsky just needs to light some fires, really, so... Perhaps don't take that AP slap. Or SAP slap. That would be ideal. Popping my engine cooling. My fighter usage this game, I will admit, has been somewhat poor. Sadly, the timer is running. I don't think one kill is going to be enough to change the score. But unfortunately, the cap lead the enemy has had for most of the game is going to be enough for them to clutch out a win, unfortunately. 
game timer is a relevant thing, so in this case, we stalled for too long. Which is tragic, but still, we did our best given the circumstances, just a bit of a difficulty by the team in understanding what they needed to do in a timely fashion. Nevertheless, some pretty good money and pretty good damage. 117,000? I would say that torpedoes performed quite adequately. The loss of two knots of speed in exchange for two extra captain skills is a pretty decent one. Loss of range as well, but that comes with its own advantages as well. Anyhow, 117,000. Over 20 torpedo hits, 10 bomb hits, 8 in caps, 3 fires, 3 floods, 3 defender ribbons, 1 solo capture, 16 spotting ribbons, 18 target hits, and 4 planes interdicted by fighter. Team score wise, top of the scoreboard with no kills, but 1600 base experience. If this had been a win, it would be a 24 base experience game. Sadly, some of my ships were unable to contribute just too much to the game, and so we did end up with a 1 1 score today in this uh, two game match. Again, torpedoes performing the bulk of the work, followed by the bombs, followed by the rockets. That Howland, of course, shredding my squadrons. So we go here. You can see I lost quite a few aircraft. The Kaga has ext extremely deep reserves. And that Holland was able to shred 22 of my <laughs> type bombers, embarrassingly enough. Which is a bit tragic, but what can you do? can't win them all. Anyhow, with that said, uh, that'll be all for now. Back from my brief hiatus, hopefully we'll be producing some more content in the near future. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the two matches and the slightly different take on a Hakaryu Kaga build. And I will catch you all later. Cheers!